gaseous oxygen vent hood or beanie cap is slowly being retracted away from the top of the external tank. OTC PLT, caution warm memory clear, no unexpected errors. Happy and discovery OTC, close and lock your visors, initiate O2 flow. T minus two minutes. Discovery Roger. CLS is go for EP, LH2 pressurization. Liquid hydrogen replenish on the external tank is now being terminated. The astronauts are closing their helmet visors, allowing their suits to be fully pressurized. T minus one minute and counting. The booster joint heaters are being deactivated at this time. T minus 50 seconds. Transitioning to orbital internal power. Discovery is now running off of its three onboard fuel cells. T minus 38 seconds and counting. Coming up on a go for auto sequence start at T minus 31 seconds. CLS is go for auto sequence start. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Discovery's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. T minus 20 seconds. T minus 15 seconds. The sound suppression water system has been activated. We have a go for main engine start. And we have main engine start. Two, one. Booster ignition and liftoff of Discovery, celebrating its 25th birthday by racking up science and supplies to the space station. Houston now controlling the midnight ride of Rick Sterko and his crew to the International Space Station. Discovery rolling on to the proper alignment for its eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Four and a half million pounds of hardware and humans taking aim on the International Outpost. Two seconds into the flight. The three liquid fuel main engines soon will throttle back to 72% of rated performance down in the bucket, reducing the stress on the shuttle as it goes transonic. Discovery three and a half miles in altitude, four miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Standing by for the throttle up call now from Capcom Eric Bow. The throttle up call acknowledged by Commander Rick Sterko, joined on the flight deck by pilot Kevin Ford, flight engineer Jose Hernandez, and Pat Forrester. Seated down on the mid deck are Danny Olivas, Christopher Fugelsang of the European Space Agency, and Nicole Stott, hitching a ride for three months on the International Space Station. One minute, 30 seconds into the flight. All of Discovery systems performing normally, 17 miles in altitude, 18 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Three good main engines, three good auxiliary power units, three good fuel cells. Discovery, two engine maroon. Copy, two engine maroon. Three minutes into the flight. Everything going very well for Discovery, 47 miles in altitude, 85 miles downrange. The orbital maneuvering system engines ignited, Discovery kicking on the afterburners for 1 minute 52 seconds, assisting the shuttle and its crew on their climb to orbit. Discovery flying on the singular power of its three liquid fuel main engines, draining a half a ton of fuel per second from the shuttle's large fuel tank. Discovery coming up on the point of negative return, where the shuttle will be too far downrange, too high on altitude to return to the launch site in the event of an engine failure. Discovery, negative return. Captain Houston, negative return. Discovery speeding straight as an arrow on its night flight toward a date with the International Space Station Sunday night. Five minutes into the ascent toward orbit. This view from a camera on the external fuel tank. Discovery, press to ATO, select Istris. Press to ATO, select Istris. 
That call from Capcom Eric Bowe indicating that Discovery can make minimal abort-to-orbit targets uh, in the event of an engine failure. However, all three main engines continue to perform perfectly. Discovery now 336 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, coming up on the six-minute mark into the flight. Discovery now 466 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Less than two minutes of powered flight remaining. Discovery and its crew, 700 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. 40 seconds of powered flight remaining. Standing by now for main engine cutoff. That will be followed a few seconds later by the separation of the external fuel tank. Booster officer confirms a good main engine cutoff. Now standing by for external tank separation. External tank separation confirmed. Discovery now in its preliminary orbit. You can see the flash photography as Discovery fades away from the camera view. Good maneuver being com commanded by uh, Rick Sterko, maneuvering Discovery so that those cameras embedded in the umbilical well can perform that flash photography of the discarded external fuel tank. An uneventful ride to orbit for the shuttle Discovery, two days shy of its 25th anniversary of its maiden... Discovery, Roger. It's an extraordinary view of the moon right behind the tail of Space Shuttle Discovery as the shuttle orbits some 150 miles above the southern tip of Africa. After they had completed the burn, This is uh, Jose Hernandez uh, adjusting to the uh, to the zero G as uh, Kevin can show you there with the uh, pencil uh, that we are really in space in a zero G environment. There you can see the uh, moon out the uh, forward window. Uh, focus isn't quite sharp. And then here is the next thing is uh, Pat and Krista were getting ready to open the uh, payload bay doors. There's Jose, I mean, uh, sorry, that's Kevin going down to the mid-deck to get his uh, suit off. And you can see Krista uh, set up that camera. If you watch very closely, uh, pretty soon you'll see the door move, actually. There it goes. You can see it moving out there out the back window. That's pretty good. Good teamwork by Pat and Krista. They did the doors and the KU band antenna.
And there's our commander settling in after uh, changing into uh, our regular flows, and uh, he's going to go ahead and uh, uh, take over while our commander goes and changes uh, into working flows as well.